Success comes from what we learn, and today's flight will offer additional lessons to improve Starship's reliability. That's the message SpaceX has been emphasizing ever since Flight 8. But now, it's time to turn those words into action, especially with future launches happening at an increasingly rapid pace. Flight 8, featuring the V2 version of Starship, revealed a number of critical issues. So how will SpaceX tackle these challenges and push the vehicle closer to full reusability? Let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Flight 8 carried immense expectations for the aerospace industry, serving as a crucial stepping stone toward full reusability. Some of those expectations were met when Super Heavy once again landed successfully. However, challenges remain. On this attempt, issues still arose. Problems with the ship, similar to Flight 7, but even more severe, and newly revealed damage at the launch site. There's no change in the past, so SpaceX now turns its focus to the future. While working with the FAA and addressing the aftermath of the flight, another critical priority is upgrading systems to resolve the issues that led to failure paving the way for success in the next launch. Before diving into solutions, let's first review the key problems from Flight 8. For Super Heavy, engine failures during the boost-back burn were once again an issue, this time affecting two engines. Then, during the landing burn, only one engine reignited, indicating that the other had completely failed. Fortunately, this did not compromise the landing attempt. For the ship, small fires broke out in the vacuum engines and leaks were detected in the sea level engines. As a result, engines began shutting down one by one, leaving only two operational vacuum engines. This imbalance in thrust caused the rocket to lose control, ultimately leading to failure. As for the launch system, recent images reveal scattered ground support equipment and smaller components around the launch site, likely dislodged or blown away by the intense vibrations and dust kicked up during launch. Nearby cameras also sustained minor damage. Problems even emerged before launch. Super Heavy experienced an issue with its fuel pump system failing to generate enough pressure to ignite its engines during the March 3rd launch attempt, forcing a scrub. Additionally, the hot staging clamp system encountered difficulties, possibly compounded by a problem in the ship's liquid oxygen tank system. The chopsticks skate system also had issues while stacking, so how will SpaceX address these problems? For the super heavy engine failures, the root cause in Flight 7 was identified as a low power condition in the igniter system. It's likely that this same issue affected Flight 8, meaning that SpaceX's previous upgrade efforts must be maintained and further improved. Specifically, the igniters require additional refinement and protective measures must be enhanced to prevent engine damage or leaks. However, there is an even more promising solution, Raptor 3. Unveiled last year, Raptor 3 is expected to be significantly more powerful and efficient than its predecessors Raptor 1 and 2. More importantly, its simplified design eliminates many small sensitive components that have historically been failure points, reducing the need for extensive protective measures. This could be a game changer in preventing ignition failures and mid-flight shutdowns. Although the current Super Heavy variant remains in V1, introducing Raptor 3 early would allow space SpaceX to evaluate its performance before implementing it on V2. This proactive approach could fast-track improvements across future launches. As for the pressure issue, SpaceX will likely reinforce its fuel pump system to ensure it can reliably generate the required ignition pressure. While this may have already been addressed after the March 3rd scrub, further refinements are necessary to prevent similar failures in upcoming flights. Regarding the hot staging system, the recent issue emerged during pre-launch preparations, but even minor setbacks warrant upgrades. There's speculation that the new hot staging design, which has been revealed in concept, could be applied to V2 and V3 Starship variants. Like Raptor 3, early implementation would provide valuable data before rolling it out on future starships. For the ship, or second stage, SpaceX has attributed its failures to an excessive harmonic response in flight, which triggered leaks and fires. 
Flight 8 exhibited similar symptoms, reinforcing the need for upgrades. SpaceX will likely enhance its venting system and nitrogen perch system to better manage pressure and thermal conditions. Again, Raptor 3 is a potential solution here, offering improved reliability and fewer components vulnerable to harmonic vibrations. If Super Heavy is already considering an early transition, then perhaps it's also time for Starship to integrate Raptor 3, especially now that it has moved to V2. The liquid oxygen tank system issues are likely tied to the expansion of the fuel tank in the V2 design. Engineers may have overlooked certain reliability aspects during the upgrade, necessitating reinforcements. While SpaceX appears to have addressed the immediate problem post-flight, a more comprehensive overhaul is required. Overall, a full transition to Starship V2 or even an accelerated shift to V3 would be the most effective way to ensure compatibility and resolve lingering technical inconsistencies. For the launch system, constant monitoring is essential, particularly for critical components like the water deluge system, orbital launch mount, communications system, ship quick disconnect, and chopsticks. The chopsticks play a dual role stacking Starship and catching Super Heavy. Given their importance, SpaceX must reinforce their mechanical integrity and implement better protective measures. In the long term, Pad B improvements may be on the horizon. If SpaceX opts against making drastic modifications to Pad A, they could instead implement their latest advancements in Pad B and later apply them to Pad A to enhance overall efficiency. Surrounding infrastructure also requires greater oversight. SpaceX must ensure that loose equipment and sensitive instruments are either relocated or secured before launch to prevent damage from extreme vibrations and debris. Beyond direct upgrades, SpaceX must also sustain its current achievements and prepare for upcoming missions. First, the super heavy catching effort needs to be further refined and eventually turned into a standard repeatable process before expanding it to the ship itself. Additionally, the successful engine relight in space, first demonstrated in Flight 6, must be validated multiple times to ensure reliability for future missions. Next, preparations for payload deployment and re-entry with heat shield and flap upgrades must continue. These are pivotal milestones in Starship's actual operational roadmap, but SpaceX can only reach them once the fundamental ship issues are resolved. All these upgrades, along with other improvements SpaceX has hinted at, are expected expected to be incorporated into the next flight. Looking ahead, SpaceX will likely attempt another super heavy catch and perform an ocean landing for the ship. Musk has already hinted at a launch timeline of four to six weeks, meaning that all these enhancements must be implemented in a matter of weeks. Currently, B-16 and S-35 are entering the testing phase. Modifications and upgrades will likely continue throughout testing, both before and after each phase, leading up to the final launch launch configuration. Testing procedures themselves may also be revised to better simulate real flight conditions, allowing engineers to gather more accurate data for future missions. After two consecutive failures on Starship flights, these comprehensive upgrades are critical for SpaceX's next step toward success. The next few weeks will be incredibly demanding for SpaceX's engineers and technicians, who will be working tirelessly to implement these improvements. If you support their efforts, comment Pursuit of Success to show your encouragement. And of course, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel to stay updated on SpaceX's groundbreaking progress. Meanwhile, innovation in space isn't limited to launch systems. Let's dive into the exciting return of Varda Space's capsule from its first commercial mission. On February 28th, Varda successfully landed its Winnebago 2, or W2, capsule at the Cuniba Test Range in South Australia. This marks a significant step forward in space manufacturing and hypersonic technology. The capsule had been in orbit for six weeks after launching aboard SpaceX's Falcon 9 on January 14th as part of a rideshare mission carrying 130 other payloads. This mission is particularly noteworthy for its contributions to on-orbit manufacturing and re-entry technology testing. Inside W-2, Varda carried an Air Force Research Laboratory spectrometer and a pharmaceutical reactor, 
both designed to push the boundaries of space-based research and development. The AFRL spectrometer plays a crucial role in hypersonic system testing as it collects optical sensor data during re-entry. This data helps refine technologies for future hypersonic vehicles and spacecraft. Meanwhile, the pharmaceutical reactor builds on Varda's past success. Last year, the company returned antiviral drug crystals that had formed in microgravity, demonstrating the potential for advanced drug production in space. Varda's thermal protection system ensured the safe re-entry of W-2 just as it did in the company's first capsule landing in 2024. CEO Will Brewey expressed excitement about the mission's success, stating, We are ecstatic to have W-2 back on our home planet safely and are proud to support significant re-entry research for our government partners as we continue to build a thriving foundation for economic expansion to low Earth orbit. Australian Space Agency head Enrico Palermo also emphasized the importance of this achievement, saying, This return highlights the opportunity for Australia to become a responsible launch and return hub for the global space community, capitalizing off the geographic advantages of our expansive continent. This mission is a major milestone not only for Varda, but for the future of commercial space reentry and manufacturing. While these technologies are still in their early stages, the potential is enormous. With continued testing and refinement, space-based production and hypersonic research could revolutionize industries on Earth. Varda's progress is proving that low Earth orbit can be a new frontier for economic expansion. As reentry capabilities improve, the possibilities for space manufacturing, pharmaceutical advancements, and hypersonic technology will only grow. Exciting times are ahead! Will Varda set the standard for future space reentry missions? Let me know in the comment section down below. Otherwise, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly in the latest details of SpaceX's progress. Thank you so much for tuning in, and remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will always follow you as long as you keep looking up.